Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, wherever, whenever it might be when you're watching this. I wanted to uh, do a new, or do a series of videos to cover uh, the world what we're living today. So there's going to be links down below of various topics uh, of what's going on, uh, and I'll do it on whatever's there on the day. I'll bring it up. So. Uh, if some of uh, the news articles are not out yet, I won't be covering it on this one. So, as a uh, a normal person, which let's say, and you've looked at what's going on in the world, uh, the protests, what's going on everywhere. Now, that might not just be what's going on now. It could be uh, you've looked back and saw the uh, protests can and quite often do lead to rioting or uh, disorderly conduct uh, you've seen forest fires going on you've seen what's going on in the two wars what's happening and you feel that they could escalate and you want to be a bit more prepared so this is like a guide to take you through the, uh, the steps to take. Now these will only be short little videos uh, and then so it means that I can exp uh, go through certain processes a lot more uh, and how to guides will go into it as well. So you've looked at the news or you've seen on YouTube that uh, we're in these two months from October to, to uh, November time we go through a uh, asteroid cloud. It's called the Tauren, Taurus, Tauren, Tauren, Tor, Tor, something like that. Cloud. Uh, we go through it every year, right? But today is where it's supposed to be uh, most visible, so you should be able to see uh, estimates saying, and there is links below. Uh, Thirteen or so uh, shooting stars, or uh, yeah, the shooting stars going through the atmosphere. So watch out tonight. Uh, hopefully it's a nice clear sky. Now there are some big rocks in there, and NASA's aware of them. Uh, I've got the link from NASA down there as well. And the sky at night, and the Y files uh, is another good one who delves a bit more into it and explains what potentially could happen. So. You've seen that, you've seen the war going on, you've seen local protesters turning into un, uh, disorderly conduct and a bit of upheaval. So, you decided, I need to be prepared, I need to be, what I never thought I was going to be is a prepper. So, most preppers deal in the rule of three. You're going to ask me what that is. Well, the rule of three is, if you've got one lighter, you might as well have three layers because if one runs out you lose it gets damaged you have a backup if you go into uh, bug out which I'll go through in a minute you have three different ways of getting to your bug out location so you always have a rule of three and it applies with prepping as well there is there's generally three types of preppers now you have a prepper or bugging and they would uh, fortify the house or they would add all their supplies in the house and they say right well, I'm going to bug in and I'm going to stay in until all the troubles or the disaster or whatever has happened is gone. There is a uh, another site where you bug out to your bug out location so you that, uh, that could be 10 20 miles away from where you live uh, and we would say have three ways of getting there because it's just road blockages and stuff like that. So you've got the two different types. Now they're quite similar. One you bug in your house and one you go to a bug out location. Now that could be a, another person's house or it could be a caravan somewhere or a secret location where you've got supplies already. The other type is more of a wilderness survivalist. They will go out with <coughs> mainly what's on their back. Uh, they may have uh, 
stuff at the location or at various locations as they're traveling and they will try and keep on the move and avoid detection so you've got the three main types of uh, preppers so you need to sort of think of well what type of what what type of person am I what can I deal with easily uh, can I have a mixture yeah you can have a mixture you know you, your plan could be bugging first of all and when it gets too dangerous where you live have a plan to bug out somewhere or bug out to a forest and live like bear, uh, grizzly Adams type thing where you set up a camp uh, now that could be just a tent it could be something what you make and you just live there until it all blows over now I'm not saying which one is the best right and no prepper would say which one's the best but they would generally go with one what they prefer you know one what they're more comfortable with uh, and that depends on everyone's skill sets and it comes down to skills and what you know and what you can do I think my camera's slowly moving down again uh, but when you you need you, when you decide what you're going to be doing and then you can go to the next step uh, it's no good buying uh, tents and camping equipment if you're going to bug in and your entire plan is that it's okay if you're going to have a plan of all oh, you know it might not happen or you know it might not be as bad or if it gets worse or bug out but if you if you your sole plan was to stay in and you never use your tents <clears throat> you will struggle when you go out in the wild so you, it is down to your skills and diversify a little bit uh, have your core plan have a backup plan for it you know and then have a third one just in case you know and you'll find that your potential surviving stuff will be a lot better uh, your location is your location safe you know it might not be you know you might feel that living next door to a shop a prime one oh, sorry I'm going to just move this I will get this sorted out uh, living next door to a shop is that a good idea well you got you can you know you got a shop right next door to you potential food water but then if there's no police and no law around that's a potential place where a load of people will be raiding you know uh, you've got to think of how many people you're going to have involved where do they live are you going to go to them they're going to come to you so there is a lot to think about and it's not something where you can just say i'm going to be a prepper i'm going to be doing this you've got to look at your family your needs of your family you know uh, it's no good uh, having your place of where you're bugging out to uh, at the top of a uh, 40 floor skyscraper if the power goes out and there's no electric for lift and your granny's with you who's got a little zimmer frame can't climb the stairs so you've got to make it practical as well now deciding which one to go with or a combination of which one to go with is your choice and be best recommended I would say if you're always keep the like the survivalist when you're going out in the woods there as an emergency case so if like the fires in Haiti you might have decided to stay at home hopefully it will go past but when it starts coming your direction you needed to bug out you know you're not going to be able to carry all your supplies you know in the case of uh, a, a forest fire coming your way have a bag ready with all the valuable stuff now valuable stuff what do we mean passport because you're going to need to have some form of id in and when it comes to like forest fires and stuff the deeds to your house if you've got them they should be in a, a safe a fireproof safe and something what you can have easy access to when you go 
because you could you know because many people say oh that house used to be mine where's your proof you know it could be uh they're always going to ask for id and proof in some cases so it's always handy to have those sort of things now because there's so many different scenarios it's i'm going to have to generalize how you will a potential plan for your uh, bug out bug in uh, or prepping experience and if there's a particular field that you would like me to comment on I will do so just leave a um, uh, message down below and I'll uh, read them and acknowledge it and I'll put it into one of the videos but these will be quite frequent videos so that's something for you to think about now uh, I'll uh, do the next one in a few days and or if there's something major happening in the world I'll uh, add the links below and do the talk about the next step straight away so the next one what I'll do is bugging in and things to do things to look out for uh, things to put your mind either at ease or things what you're gonna have to really think about either protecting uh, your home or making it a bit more fortified in some cases so that's me as I said these are only going to be small videos and uh, bite-sized chunks to get you ready for being a prepper and everyone started off on day one uh, all the YouTube channels that you see they all start they all said I need to prepare I need to be a prepper I need to protect what I've got on my family. We've all been there. We all started off at some point. And in some cases, it's not too late. But the chances of you surviving long term are greater the quicker you start preparing. So, if you like the video and you think it's a, uh, we should go ahead with this, show me your support. Uh, give me a thumbs up. If you pass it on to a friend, you know, and you're that friend, subscribe, and then you'll be able to see uh, the steps of being a prepper. And if you'd like to leave a comment, please do so. I do read them, and so does Rich. We will get as much, we will get back to as many as we can, and as as prompt as we can. And you know, keep training, keep them skills up, and I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.